Welcome. Today we're going to be looking at HF Weather Facts, a way of downloading weather charts via shortwave radio. This is applicable for us in very remote locations where we might not have access to, say, the internet or regular VHF weather broadcasts or even local broadcasts. Granted, this might become an antiquated system in the next decade or so as the Skynet by Elon Musk's Starlink system will provide internet on a global basis. So the equipment we're going to need is a shortwave radio, a computer system, and some software. And the software I'm running is by Black Cat and it's called HF Weather Facts. It's downloadable. I'll provide a link in the description below. Runs about 20 bucks and well worth it. So the software is available for both Apple iOS systems and PC Windows based systems. I'm showing an example of where I'm putting my iPad right against the speaker of the radio and downloading the information. In a subsequent image I'll show a PC that's directly hooked uh, into the uh, audio output of my shortwave radio. Uh, I'm showing real life examples here, uh, once why maybe the quality isn't as good. Again, I'm about 500 miles away from the station. I'm running a small indoor antenna to kind of give an example of a real life situation where you might be downloading this. So this is showing a PC download of uh, the image. Overall broadcasts are about half hour to 45 minutes and provide a number of charts and I'll show examples of this in a little bit. Download rates are relatively slow, about 120 lines a, a minute or so. So uh, you definitely need a little bit of time to, to download all the charts. But once you get used to this, you'll be able to figure out what charts are most useful to you. So this is a comparison between the HF fax download over the radio and an internet captured image. You can see the internet cap captured image is much better, but uh, again, I think you could be able to discern the information on the, uh, the download. So what I'm using in this video is a conventional shortwave receiver. You can use any receiver that can pick up shortwave radio. Uh, portables, you can use software to find radio. Um, and shortwave is just above the AM band and it's below the FM band. Why shortwave radio works for long distance communications is something called skip. There's a layer in the uh, atmosphere called the ionosphere. It's one of Earth's layers. And radio signals can bounce off these. Now the ionosphere uh, fluctuates. It varies throughout the day. Um, as an example, it tends to lower a little bit during the day and develop very strongly. And thus high frequencies tend to work out pretty good. At night it somewhat dissipates and lower frequencies tend to work a little bit better. Ranges can be from couple hundred miles up to worldwide. We also can get ground waves. Those are usually for very close types of uh, uh, communications. VHF on the other hand passes through the ionosphere and is lost in the space. Hence why we tend not to get very distant communication with VHF signals. One of the nicest features about the Black Cat software is that it does have a frequency menu list uh, for all the stations. Uh, you can also download this information from the National Weather Service website and I'll post a link to that below. Uh, but this is really convenient that you can uh, see what region you actually would like to get the information from. As an example, the station I'm getting is up in Point Reyes, California and that broadcasts information for the Western Pacific and uh, Western United States. The other ones in the United States, there's one in Louisiana and that does the Gulf Coast area, one in Boston that does the Atlantic seaboard in the eastern U.S. They're found all around the world, uh, countries like Australia, uh, states like Hawaii, 
uh, continents like Africa, South America, and Europe. So it's actually a nice global type of uh, thing that they have uh, broadcasting and available for mariners and other folks in remote situations to actually use. So the Black Cat HF WeatherFax software also has some post-processing -proce features. They can allow you to adjust things like skew or page alignments, which may occur uh, during download from the, the radio signal. Um, there's also some menu options for also processing during uh, the download from the radio signals. Uh, they may help with visibility, such as kind of inverting the, the, the contrast and making the grayscale a little bit different. And also things like manipulating the frequency. It's, it's almost like a software-defined radio uh, audio processing situation. And this can really help in real marginal. You might notice that a lot of the uh, images here of the download is you see these gray streaks going through that, and that's due to propagation as the signal moves in and out uh, with fluctuations in the ionosphere. I believe it's a 48 hour broadcast prediction for March. So, what I'm going to do now here is interpret the weather map that I've downloaded. Off on the right, I see the west coast of the United States, a small low pressure system. There's Hawaii, and on the left side is, is Asia. I note a big frontal boundary coming off of Alaska, going to just north of uh, Hawaii. Uh, here in the northern hemisphere at this latitude, we're in an area called the westerlies, and most of these fronts move from west to east, so in an easterly direction. I also note the longitude and latitude if I'm uh, unsure about uh, positions of these areas and how long it may take. I note this big low pressure system off of Alaska, another low pressure approaching the west coast, and a big ridge of high pressure uh, off kind of in the center here. It's along these areas that we get these frontal boundaries, and I can note the little wind diagrams that we see there. And so I could make predictions for where we're going. These are our wind flag symbols, uh, real common on uh, these HF weather facts downloads. And what we see is that we get these flags here, and they point to, to the direction of the oncoming wind. So where the flags are, what we see is that's where the wind's coming from. Each of the whole marks represents 10 knots. Each of the half marks represent 5 knots, where triangles represent 50 knots. Subsequently, we just add these together, and uh, that's our wind speed. And what we see on the inset there is there's three whole ones, so that's 30 knots and a half, and that's five knots. So we have 35 knots, which is the beginnings of gale force conditions. Here we see the symbols for frontal boundaries. The two we're most concerned about are at the bottom, the warm front and the cold front. The warm front's in red, cold front's in blue. Of course, with HF weather facts, it's in black and white, so we're mainly looking at the symbols with the warm front having the half rounds and the cold front having the, the triangles. Um, warm fronts are typically associated with fair weather, warmer conditions, relative, and cold fronts with colder conditions and often uh, precipitation. Uh, generally, we get precipitation right at the, the boundary of the warm and cold fronts, so it's the area of most concern. Wind patterns, air patterns, I should say, uh, tend to go from uh, high pressure to low pressure, and where we get the intermix, we get these boundaries here. With the inset, you can see that uh, we have both a, a cold front and a warm front interacting. The symbols, either the half rounds or the triangles, denote the direction of the air movement that we see. So that's really kind of important. In some cases on some of these HF weather facts maps, you'll see uh, individual station information. And this is kind of a graphical display of what that would look like. We don't have any on our map, uh, so I'll, I'll kind of brush over this, but it's something you may see and it gives us a lot of imperative information like temperature and barometric pressure.
So with all the symbols we learned about, see if you could find them on this map. You could note the two high pressure systems off to the south and the low pressure up to the north and another smaller low pressure system coming on to the western United States. So now we could start looking at a regional picture, depending on our precise location, of what the weather may look like uh, in advance. So now we're at our weather map, and uh, let's highlight some of the uh, things we see here. And there's our big high pressure system kind of off into the south uh, eastern Pacific Ocean right here, and it spins clockwise in our hemisphere. Up here off of Alaska, we have two low pressure systems, and they spin counterclockwise, and they're moving in, in that direction. Of course, we have a frontal boundary right there. So we're going to find nasty weather and such. So uh, we can see that all that is moving in kind of a uh, westerly direction at our latitude. And in a few days we'll be over more towards the uh, eastern part there, approaching the west coast of the United States. Again, what I have here is the uh, high pressure moving up, creating a ridge in which they'll push the low pressure systems up towards, uh, oh, Washington, British Columbia, and such. And again, there's a small low pressure system there that's actually coming on board there, and it's spinning counterclockwise, bringing a storm to the northeast, northwestern United States right there. So here I've added a little section on basic weather. Uh, just a refresher, or if you want to learn a little bit more about the weather, this is uh, the very fundamentalist parts of weather here associated with uh, our predictions. So weather takes place in the atmosphere, and the atmosphere is one of the thinnest layers of all the Earth's systems we have here. In fact, it's so thin we could actually see through it. Uh, it's divided into a number of different layers. Uh, what we see is most weather takes place in what we call the troposphere, which is the lowest third of uh, kind of our three atmospheric, major atmospheric layers that we see here. The oceans play an important role in the overall climate of the Earth and where we might be at. After all, we are the water planet. Uh, the temperature of the oceans and its circulation can have a great influence on, on local climate and subsequent weather patterns. As an example, warm water tends to evaporate easier, hence we get clouds in those areas where cold water oftentimes much harder to evaporate. Of course, part of uh, Earth's system is trying to mediate this extra warmth and take it up to where there's colder waters and colder waters where there's warmer waters and there's this delicate dance that's going on. Along with Earth's rotation, incoming solar radiation helps drive the weather we see on our planet. Incoming solar radiation plays an important part in driving the weather and climate on our planet. We see most sunlight coming in around Earth's equator. This creates warm air at the surface, which uh, becomes less dense, and it rises, creating what we call a, a thermal low, because rising air creates low pressure. Subsequently, it would like to take this air and move it up to the poles, but because it ascends and cools off, becomes more dense, it starts to des descend. And this descent occurs about mid-latitude locations and creates high pressures. And this is where we tend to see most of Earth's desert areas 
around the descending air at mid-latitudes. Subsequently, again at the equator, we see this rising air as it rises, moisture condenses as it cools off, and creates thunderstorms. Thus, we have Earth's rainforest belts. Because the Earth is turning, what we see is this causes frictional forces on the air masses, causing weather patterns or to, to bend and create these weather patterns, such that we get places like the doldrums, where we see areas of low pressure associated with rising air. We have our, our trade winds, where what we see is air patterns are moving from east to west. And then we get our westerlies, where the areas uh, of, of wind are going from east to west. So again, uh, I'm in a mid-latitude location up in the westerlies here, but we do get, during the summer months especially here, we get, get some influences from the trade winds where we get uh, a lot of subtropical air coming into the, to the region. So it's this combination of oceanic temperature, uh, incoming solar radiation, and the rotation of the Earth that really influence a lot of uh, uh, the major climate patterns we see on our planet. Again, how these air masses interact creates the weather that we tend to see, and this is where the HFX comes in real handy. Clouds are one of the most interesting aspects of uh, our weather patterns. When we see uh, ascending air masses and air rising, what we tend to get is condensation of the water vapor and thus creating clouds. Of course, different clouds have different meanings and uh, occur at, at different elevations. As an example, we have uh, our puffy cumulus clouds and uh, it tells us there's a little bit of moisture in the air, but uh, things are not too bad. However, they can develop into much bigger things like cumulonimbus clouds, which are thunderheads and associated with thunderstorms during especially the summer months or warm rising air. We also have high cirrus clouds. Those are uh, very high up in the upper atmosphere and may tell us about impending movements of, of air masses, hence weather fronts approaching. Again, when we have two, or, two different types of air masses uh, colliding together, what we see is some of the air has got to move somewhere and a lot of times it moves up thus creating clouds. So when we talk about uh, fronts, well, we have our cold fronts and warm fronts, and when we talk about these approaching air masses, we look at their temperature relative to the existing air mass that we have in place at the time. Cold air, cold air associated with cold fronts, warm air associated with warm fronts. And then we have something called an occluded front. I'll talk about that in a second. But what we see is as one air mass is overtaking another air mass, it forces uh, one of the air masses up. Uh, with a cold front, it causes a lot of the warm air to move up. Subsequently, again, it starts to, as it moves up, it gets cooler, condensates, forms clouds, and we get precipitation. Subsequently, also, as we see a, a warm front approaching, what we see is some, again, some of that warm air, because it's less dense, is forced upwards, causing some of that to condensate. So we'll get different types of, of clouds kind of associated with this. Uh, one of the more apparent things is uh, oftentimes with an approaching front, maybe 24 hours beforehand, we'll see a change in some of our high cirrus clouds, often called mare's tails and such. This then may be followed by things like uh, cumulus clouds and developing uh, nimbo cumulus clouds and such where we might start to get precipitation. An occluded front is just a front where a cold front is overtaking another cold front and it squeezes kind of the existing warm air in between those up and that can also cause precipitation. So this is where we get our foul weather and where the HF fax comes in handy because we can see where these uh, approaching fronts are and where our existing uh, air masses are relative to each other. So this is just kind of a beginning primer on weather and climate and how we can interpret weather maps and looking at HF facts all together and how we can use that for discerning weather in any given location we're at on our planet. I hope you enjoyed the video. Maybe you learned something too. Uh, and if you like the content here, please hit the subscribe button.
Thank you. Have a great day.